So what we're going to do is uh, take a look at an introduction to sculpting in Blender. Uh, the version of Blender that I have is set to um, 2.92. Now, the way that I got to this is if you make a new project and you go to sculpting, this is the initial layout they give you. Uh, a couple other things that I do is if I go up to edit and I go down to preferences here, I usually turn on tab for pie menu under key map. Now, what that does is if you press the tab key, you'll see it brings up this pie menu and it gives you ac um, it gives you access to different modes. Here's the object mode, the sculpt mode, the edit mode, all this good stuff. Let's go back to the sculpt mode. Something else I do is in my Wacom properties, I usually set up uh, my pen so that the front nib is set to middle click. What this allows me to do is if I click in the middle mouse button and you won't notice it in the screen, so maybe uh, take a look up at the um, axis at the top, I can actually rotate around. And if I hold the shift key down and I press that, I can pan around. Now as for zooming, if you hold the control key down and I click in that front middle mouse button, it'll let me zoom. So it's pretty good to sort of just practice holding shift, centering it, all that good stuff. The next thing I do before I start sculpting is I like to sculpt symmetrical and then I make it asymmetrical when I'm finishing up or polishing the piece. So I'm going to go up here and um, click on my first option here and I'm going to go to symmetry and turn on mirror X. And what you'll see is two little blue dots here. I'm going to hit F to focus to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. And you can see now I have two dots and anything I do on one side, it'll do on the other. So let's take a look at how I make a cartoon head, for example. Well, off to the side here in sculpt mode, you can see I have all of these brushes. Now, if you don't see them, you can press the T like Terry key and that'll bring these up. And I usually press G and I'll start with my grab brush. And there's different options here, but for now, try to keep your sculpting simple down to two or three brushes as you're learning. So I'm gonna press F and I'm gonna make my brush pretty big. And in the front view, I'm gonna pull this in now, something that I, I tend to do as I'm moving this around is I'm not exactly um, in an orthographic rotation mode. I'm in a perspective one. So if I press the 5 key, it'll move me to orthographic. And I tend to sculpt in this. Now, the difference is with perspective, your um, any objects you have in three-dimensional space, will uh, you'll be able to see the distance between them. So let's actually just really quickly, I'm going to hit tab and go to object mode to show you what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit shift A or up at the top, you can go to add and go to mesh. And I'm just going to add a, um, let's say a cube for a second. And I'm going to move this back here and off to the back part here. Now notice if I'm in orthographic mode and I click off, they essentially look like they're at the same distance. Now, if I press five and I go to perspective, you can see that it's, it's clear that this is much uh, closer in front. So let's actually move this off to the side. You can see that I can see the side up here. If I press five again and I'm in orthographic, they look like they're almost at the same plane. This is important when you're sculpting because you want to be able to look at your model uh, in a way where it's almost um, flat dead on and to the side. Otherwise, you can have this fisheye sculpting mode. So let me sort of show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and just click on that. And I know it's highlighted because it's orange. I'm going to press the delete key. Now, as I shape this, so let's select our circle, press tab or sphere rather, and then go down to sculpt mode. Now, if I pull this down, notice I'm in perspective mode here and I start to sculpt and it looks pretty good. I'm just trying to get a nice egg shape for the head from the front view. Now, if I move around like this, you know, kind of rotating to the side, bring that chin down a little, looks perfectly fine. The problem is when I go to orthographic mode, which is the true mode of uh, knowing how to sculpt, you can see you'll get some weird uh, oblongness. It does not look the same. So what you want to do is inside of, you want to start sculpting, in my opinion, everything in orthographic mode and then change it later. So for now, press 5, and this is on the key keyboard on the side. Um, and I'm using a full-size keyboard here. So I'm going to move these in. And I'm just going to shape out a very generic head. So something like this. 
Now the high point of the head is actually back here. So I'm going to pull this back just a little bit. And what I'm looking for is something like this. So flat sides, pulling this down and I, I sort of flatten the front of the egg shape. Now let's go ahead and add a neck in here. So I'm going to hit tab and go to object mode. And then I'm going to press shift and a remember we had done it. Uh, we added a cube by going to mesh cube here. I'm going to go to shift a and I'm going to do it in here just to speed up time and I'm going to go to cylinder. Now let's take a look at how we can move this object around. Right now I'm on my move tool which will give me this move axis controller where I can kind of shift it things like that. Another way of doing this uh, freely is pressing the G like George uh, or garage and so what that lets me do is lets me move it freely. But the problem with this is sometimes you're like, well, I don't know how to move it directly on one axis. Well, Blender has already sort of thought of this. So let's say I want to move this down. I can push G and then the axis Z to move it up and down. Now, the way I know that this is the Z axis is if you look up here, you can see there's a Z, a Y, and an X. So let's say I wanted to move it on the X. I can hit G and X, and I don't like that, so I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. Now, this is a pretty thick neck, and I'd like it to intrude inside the body or inside the back of the head here. So there's a couple ways to scale. You can click this option here, and you can click in the middle here and scale that down, or you can press S and scale it. I tend to, um, I came from a ZBrush uh, Maya world, and I have those programs and swirls on that, but I really love this concept of just kind of rotating, hitting G, moving it up hitting S and then Z to scale up the neck, pressing S again to bring this down. So let's kind of line this up. So we here we have our object. I'm just gonna press S out here, S like Sam, and I'm gonna scale that in. And then I'm gonna press S and Z to give it a very long neck. So S and then Z to just scale it up on the Z axis. Then I'm gonna press G and Z to move that up. And then I wanna move it back on Y, so G and Y. So just something like this. So all I'm doing is placing this cylinder just somewhere in the back here. Um, and when you're sculpting, it'll give you a lot of freedom. Now let's actually, actually scale that down just a little bit more and I'm gonna move it. I think that's fine. All right, so what I'd like to do is, um, and I'm gonna click on this selection uh, option up top so I'm not seeing that uh, axis controller is I'd like to kind of join these together so when I sculpt, I can actually sculpt this as a clean, um, just kind of coming all the way back down from the back of the neck. So how do I do that? Well, you can actually join objects together and you use Control J to do that. So I'm gonna hold Control and click on the head here or you can click inside this over here. So Control and click this. You can see both are selected. Now if I hit Control and J, if you look up here, you can see it joined it as one object. Now you might be wondering like, oh cool, so is it also one mesh, like I can just sculpt now? Well, if I hit tab and I go to sculpt mode, and then I'm going to look at this in wireframe mode, so let's hit Z and then go to wireframe mode, you'll notice there is different amount of polygonal faces on each one. This is really bad for sculpting. Like it's actually going to, if I try to sculpt across, I'll get a lot more detail here and not enough here because there's just not enough geometry. So a nice way of meshing these objects together as well as keeping the geometry the same is using this remesher tool. So I'm gonna show you a quick way to sort of use this. Um, and so what I like to do is if, I, if you hit shift and R like Roger, you'll see this box appears. And as I move my cursor left and right, you can see I can control the scale of these little boxes in this cage. And what that indicates is these are going to be the size of the polygons that this is going to be remeshed at. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna hit Shift and R. I'm, let's say I like that. I'm gonna hit Control and R now. You can see it remeshed it with polygons that are roughly that same size. And it made it one nice object, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna hit Z, like Zebra again. I'm gonna go to solid mode. You can see it looks pretty good, uh, not too bad. Um, let's go ahead and add some ears. So the ears roughly fall where that high point is just behind the jaw. So I'm gonna show you a quick way uh, to add a ear. I'm gonna hit Shift A. Oops, let me hit Control Z to undo that actually. And let me undo that masking. So I'm gonna hit Tab and go to Object Mode. 
So here we are back in object mode. I'm gonna hit Shift A again, and I'm gonna add a cylinder. So we wanna place our ear somewhere out here. So I'm gonna select that cylinder, press G, like garage, move it off to the side. And like what I'd like to do is rotate this about 90 degrees on the x-axis. Now I can do this a couple different ways. I can click over here and select this rotation tool and sort of rotate it. And I look over here and I can say, okay, uh, it's 89. So let me just type in 90 here. So that's one way of doing it. And a hot key to bring this up is you press N like Nancy. Another way of doing this is let's undo that is I can actually just press R for rotation and that this will be free rotate. And I can type in the axis I want to, which is X. And then I can type in nine and zero and press enter. And now you can see it rotated at 90 degrees on the X. It's just a nice fast way of doing it. Now I tend to make my ears a little bit thicker because it helps with sculpting. So I'm gonna hit, um, let's go ahead and scale this on the Y axis. So S and Y, and I'm gonna scale this in and I'm gonna leave it pretty thick. So about there, maybe a little wider. So S and Y, cause this whole thing gets scaled down. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Now I'm gonna hit S and scale this down, G and start positioning this where I want it to be in the head. So let's move it a little bit forward and a little bit more. And then you can either rotate it with this or you can hit R and then we wanna be on the um, Z axis and just kind of rotate it freely. Now the best way to, in, to figure out whether how, how big you want your ears to be, if it's like a really kind of goofy looking character, is we should mirror this ear across. So I'm gonna to go to my modifiers panel here, go to add modifier and select mirror. Now the object I wanna mirror across is this head. So I'm gonna click this little eyedropper here and let's try that one more time and select the head and you can see it mirrored it across. Now, right off the bat, I can see that this ear is way too forward. I need it somewhere back here. So let's go ahead and just kind of rotate it and I'm gonna hit G and just kind of position a little bit further back. So something like this. So let's move it a little bit further forward. I want it just behind where the jaw would go. And all of this gets pulled out and we're working with clay. So the back of the head actually needs to be a little bit bigger things like that. So let's scale that down just a little bit and bring that in. And these ears are gonna get shaped and all that good stuff. So let's do it again. Now, one of the things, and notice we're in object mode, is if I select the cylinder and I hold control, and, or uh, shift rather, and select the head, you can see I selected both. Over here, you have to select this and hold control. So it's different buttons. Control over here, shift out here. And then I press control J. Watch what happens to this other ear. Notice it disappeared, but it still made it one object. The reason for that is we never applied our modifier here, and there is no mirror modifier on the head here. So what we can do is either hit Control A or click this drop down here to hit apply. So I'm gonna press Control A just as I'm hovering, because I, I like to do sort of faster workflows. I'm gonna hit Tab and go to Sculpt Mode. I'm gonna press Z, like Zebra, and go to Wireframe. And you can see, again, we have different density of polygons and that's okay because we're going to hit shift R and go a little bit more detailed and then I'm going to press control R here and you can see that um, it did not do both let's try that one more time let's see are these combined yes they're combined let's see shift R and then control R and then let's hit Z and go to wireframe or solid and then go back to wireframe and let's see why did you not sculpt mode why did it not sculpt this is interesting ah uh, because they were never really joined so you can see here if I select both now I'm gonna hit Control J, that's the reason. Okay, now let's go to sculpt mode. All right, silly mistake. And now if I hit Control R, you can see it remeshed them the same. So let's go to solid. There we go. All right, I'm gonna actually go a little higher because I don't want a little denser in polygons and then I'm gonna hit Control R because I don't like a, a lot of that, a, too much of that crystallization. So you can see I have ears, I have the neck, I have a face. And again, we need a little bit of love when it comes to shaping this. 
Um, and so what we'll do in the next video is we'll start to look at maybe uh, we'll focus on the eyes.